Hi everybody, in this video we're going to do uh, something a little different. Uh, one of my viewers wanted to know how to navigate around the menu using an Xbox controller or a PS4 controller using the new input system. So uh, I'm going to show how to do that real quick. So he, for him he had, I think it was a couple buttons and an input and he wanted to be able to navigate through those buttons and also enter the input but when he entered the input area, he was stuck there. So uh, what we could do is, let me kind of organize this a bit. So first of all, we'll go to our input fields or our play buttons, and we'll set that up first. So first the play button, right here under navigation, I will specifically uh, tell Unity what I want to do. So first I'll hit none, then I'll put explicit. So it gives us these options right here. and. Uh, I had done this already before, so it, it kind of already set it up. But anyways, when I select up on my uh, either on my keyboard or my game uh, pad or anywhere that gets uh, up and down input, this is where it will jump to next. So I'm on the play button. When I push up, it'll jump to the the input field. When I push down, it'll jump to the quit button. Now let's say I had a button over here on our left side. Let's say I don't know, maybe a setting settings button. Then I could just drag this. So for my input field, I had it over here. I could just drag it. Same with the quit button. Now let's say I wanted on left to go on the to the input, and then on right to go on to the quit. So I'll just do it like this. But this only works when I'm on the play button. So if I'm on the quit button, uh, and we go here to navigation, and we go to none, and then explicit, you can see that when I'm on the quit button, if I go left nothing will happen and if I go right nothing will happen but if I push up I'll go to the play button and if I push, if I push down I'll go to the or er, to the input field now the input field has something similar as well so we'll go to none again and explicit and again if I select on down it'll work or if I select up it'll work now I have this script but I'm going to disable it just to show you what would happen if and if I didn't have a script. And also on my input field, I have it to currently not be interactable, so I'll just set it to interactable, and then I'll hit play. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you guys real quick. So I landed on the play button first, but if I go to my event system, and right here it says first selected, if I drag in the quit button, and then I hit play, the quit button should be selected first. So as you can see, now the quit button is selected first. So let me go back and just put it to the play button real quick. Now the event system, it also shows a debugger right here. So as you can see right now, um, I am currently selecting the play button. If I go down, let me push it. And if I go down, I'm on the quit button. If I go down, I'm on the input field. Now I changed it to red when I select it, just so you guys can see that it's being selected. So if I go to the input field, get this down, the selected color is red, as you can see. Now now here, I am pretty much stuck and I can't get out. So if I wanted to type or whatever, I cannot get out. So uh, what we could do is we could set it to interactable to be false. So now we could still get out. And as you can see, we could you know move around. The only problem that I wasn't able to figure out and maybe somebody else could figure it out if you guys know just leave it in the comments below but i wasn't able to highlight this or anything to show that um that it was selected the only thing i was able to do is to when it's selected to change this text right here so you know your player will know that it's actually selected and to do something and i'll show you that in a bit so um that's pretty much the setup for that so you just you know set these up to whichever way you want to select it also, let me hit play and show you when I press the left arrow and the right arrow, uh, see what happens. So I'm on play and when I push the left one, it goes to uh, this one. And when I push right, it goes to the quit. And that's because we have it set up like that here. And you could also have a visual. So as you can see, when you push left, it's going to go down to here. When you push right, it's going to go to the quit. And uh, if you go all the way, it's kind of hard to see. But when you push uh, down, it'll go down this way. And when you push up, it'll go all the way over here. Now let's get into the kind of the coding part. Uh, my viewer also had a question about the keyboard. So he's working on the Xbox game. And uh, he was wondering uh, how to have the keyboard pop up. Because of course, I mean, uh, you can't type anything on the Xbox if you don't have a keyboard. So I did a little bit of research and I found that you have to call an actual method. 
uh, let me just run my uh, name for field. Let me turn on the script. So we're gonna go to the script and uh, I'll probably leave this script uh, on my website just so you guys could see it. And if you guys wanna kind of study it, uh, I'll probably add some comments just so you guys could go through it and see what's going on here. But pretty much uh, I have my input field and then these are just for the controllers. So if you guys don't know about the new input system, you have to call your input. I didn't change the, the name of it. So it just, you know, just chose new controllers. And then this is the part that we need for the keyboard. So we have to call a touch screen keyboard and then you name it whatever you want. For the awake, we do not have to call this. Even though it's private, we do not have to reference it. We won't get no error or anything like that. So if we go to, let me kind of show you what's going on here. So on the awake, the action, my controllers or whatever of the new input system, I'm just setting it to equal uh, new controllers because I wasn't able to reference it. I actually added this, I put this as public and it wasn't showing in my inspector. So if you guys know why, leave me a comment. I would appreciate it. But anyways, um, this way I was able to reference it. So if you guys aren't able to reference it, just you know, use your variable that you use for your, your controllers and just set it to new controllers and you won't get uh, no reference error. And then input field, I get the component because this script is sitting on uh, the input field. Uh, so I'll just get the component. I don't have to find it or anything like that. I'll just straight get it. And then uh, here's where the gamepad stuff start kicking in. So the event system is the that debugger that I was showing you guys that shows you what uh, button or input field or any UI that is selected, what is currently selected. So all I do is I call the event system, I call current, and then I call the current selected object, and I make sure it is equal to the input field game object and that it is not selected. So up here I have just a private bool, uh, making sure that it is not selected. And um, if that is true, then uh, we're gonna have our deselect and select. We're gonna disable and en enable depending on what that is. And uh, what deselect and select is, is if I go over here and I go to my um, controllers. So this is the new controllers. As you can see, that's the name that I have here, uh, new controllers. So you would do the same thing for yours is um, you would just get the name, copy it and then and name the variable anything you want. And then I'm calling player. So actually, let me make this a little smaller so you can see this. Okay, so if we go over here. So action dot player. So I'm calling this action map. And then we're calling the deselect to be disabled, which is this right here. And if I go to my deselect, it's just the button east, which would be, um, it would be the circle on the PlayStation or I think it's the B on the Xbox. I haven't played Xbox in a long time, so I'm, I'm not sure, honestly, uh, but it's the East button. And then we're going to enable the select. So the select is going to be the South button, the X or uh, the A on the Xbox or the X on the PlayStation. And then um, we're going to add this uh, plus equals. So later on, I'm going to explain what this is, but if what all these codes is, uh, this is pretty much everything that comes with the input system. So right now I'm kind of just gonna answer what my viewer was saying but later on I'm gonna make a video of this in more detail just if you want to see it sooner just let me know in the comments below and I'll make it sooner than later but yeah hopefully my viewer knows what this is you pretty much just uh, when the button is pressed so the select button which is the X or the A on the Xbox then we're gonna add this method and the method or function is this one right here so we just add it so every time we push X or A, this will perform this code right here. And what this code is doing is just set, setting the, the bool selected to true so um, that this don't, doesn't get called all over again. And then uh, we're gonna set the input field to interactable because after that, we, will, we want to type once we pre press X or A. So once the user presses X or A, we want to be able to type and then we'll make sure we take this selected out of the, uh, we remove it from the performance. So we remove this method. So we make sure it doesn't get called once again. And then we open the keyboard. So this is the part that my viewer was, was wondering about is that this part right here. Now you do have to make a variable because after you have to make it null if you want to close it. So uh, make a variable, uh, make sure it's a touch screen keyboard variable. And then, you know, just go down here uh, on your selected method, 
just name it keyboard make sure it equals the touchscreen keyboard dot open and then you could also add if you add a comma right here you could put touchscreen uh, keyboard type dot and then you could ch uh, choose what you want if you want it to be a standard one so this is the standard keys if you wanted a, de a decimal point uh, so a keyboard with numbers and a decimal point and you could just go down this list it tells you pretty much everything uh, email address keyboard with additional keys suitable for typing emails one-time code keyboard with standard numeric um, keys so probably dashes you know multiplication symbols stuff like that uh, you know phone pad there's a bunch of them that you could check right here there's even URL stuff like that so you could just you know put it as you want and uh, that's it or you could just leave it like that and they will choose the default one for you and then I just put a debug log just so I knew that I was pressing that the X button on my PlayStation controller but it also works on the Xbox controller for the A button so this is for the selected part and now back over here so that's the method we called back over here when uh, like I said when our current selected object is equal to the input field we're going to do all this and we're going to set the text of the input field to equal this. So the player kind of knows what's going on since I wasn't able to figure out how to kind of make that highlight when um, when you're on the input field. But thinking about it now, you could probably even make an animation or something that, I don't know, maybe changes the color or um, scales the input field up and down so they could kind of see what, what's going on or something. But anyways, uh, we're going to set the text to this and then we're going to, if if it's not on the current game object or if it's selected as equal to false, this is what this means. So when you see the, the exclamation point before a boolean, it just means false. If I don't have nothing, it just means true. It's just a you know, simpler way to writing it. And then, so we're going to disable it if none of these conditions are true. And then uh, right here, if the current selected object equals input game object but it's also selected so if we have selected that uh, input field then we're gonna make sure that we deselect we in enable the deselect button which would be in my case would be circle or the B I think on the Xbox I might be wrong I probably am but anyways it will call this method and this method just sets the keyboard like I was telling you right here, it says the keyboard to null, which means it will close the keyboard. Uh, for some reason, they don't have like a close method. So uh, just set it to null and it should close. Selected, we set it back to false. Input field dot interactable, we're gonna set it back to false. So make sure we can't interact with it, make sure it's boolean is not true. And then the input field, we're gonna select it. So if we do not do this, uh, when we push, you know, our east button, then then no game object is going to be selected and you're pretty much going to be stuck there. So make sure you call select. That way it selects that input field and then you can start moving from there. And then uh, we're just going to remove this from uh, the performed list or performed actions. And then uh, right here is just when I enable this or disable this, this will enable or disable. So let's see this in action. One thing I did uh, read is that for this to work you do need xbox what's it called a dev kit so if you do not have a dev kit like i do not you will not be able to see this but just to show you guys what's going on oh on playstation it doesn't work also but anyways to to show you what's going on this will be only for iphone android windows store apps and uh, if you go down here, it says right here, Universal Windows Apps. Uh, the touchscreen keyboard is supported when a physical keyboard is not connected. So uh, the people that don't know what a Universal Window platform is, I actually looked it up for you guys. So it says right here, so you guys can see. It says right here, Universal Windows Platform is a computer platform created by Microsoft and first introduced in Windows 10. The purpose of the platform is to help develop universal apps that run on Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, and Xbox One. So uh, it's for the Xbox One system. So yeah, so that would work on the Xbox as well. And then uh, yeah, there, I'm gonna leave all these documentations below so you guys can check this out. As you can see, it opens up. Then the keyboard, uh, you can set the text, all this stuff. 
Yeah, I'll set it in the description so you guys can see it. And let's see it in action now. Let me hit play and hopefully I enable the script. Okay, so let me try maximizing it. Okay, so now it, I'm gonna use my PlayStation 4 controller. Hopefully uh, you guys could at least hear it. That way you guys could see that I'm not using the keyboard or anything like that. So when I move it, and as you see, when I went to the bottom, it says press out uh, button on gamepad to type. And I could also, you know, exit it. Mm -hmm. And I could write on the code when I'm not in the input field to to remove this press stop button on the input field text to remove it that way people don't get confused because right now it seems like uh, you know you could still push it to type which you could if you wanted to do that but anyways uh, now if I push X on the play button nothing happens if I push it on the quit button nothing happens but if I push it on the on the actual input field um, you could see now you could type and what would happen here since we put that uh, touch screen keyboard uh, dot open the keyboard would open and uh, you would be able to type so now if let's say we want to cancel it and we don't want to type no more we could just push circle and as you can see now we could move on to our next ones so X to uh, type circle to leave and then uh, yeah and if we go over here to our console to our console over here and we're gonna go down a bit we could see our south button being pressed and our east button let me clear it so now I'm on play I'm gonna push the south button just so you guys could see that even though you push the X or the A it will not work it's not working, nothing's happening. And then same with the quit, it's not registering anything. Now if I go to the south, or to the input pad, push X, you can see south button pressed. And if I push circle, you can see uh, east button pressed. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that was helpful. And I hope it answered your question. If, just in case I didn't answer your question, or just in case uh, anybody else has any questions, leave me a comment down below and uh, try my best to answer it. If I'm not able to answer it, uh, you know, in a comment, I'll make a video like I did right now. But yeah, uh, hopefully this helped. Yeah, but anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out in any way, hit that like button. Um, I would really appreciate it. It would help this channel. It would help me out, keep me supported. Uh, motivated just seeing all the subscriptions just makes me want to make more videos so um once again thank you if you haven't subscribed yet do not forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this hit that bell notification uh, so you can get notified as soon as uh, i post a video and um, thank you